Welcome to another episode of Deepen with Christina. I'm your host, Christina Weber. Every time before I start a podcast and hit that record button, I like to sit and take three breaths. I just noticed as I was like grounding in, I wanted to keep my eyes shut for a little bit longer and stay in meditation, do my daily Vedic meditation of 20 minutes twice a day. Although I will share, I'm not always perfect at that. I try to meditate um, every day and I probably succeed two to three times a week successfully at once a day. So truth be told. Um, but I do like to access my meditation and it's great for when you're going to ground into recording something, preparing for something. Even when I'm sitting at my desk before I start to work, I like to just shut my eyes and reflect before I hit power. <laughs> um, I'm back at the portal. Uh, this is the community space in the Pacific Palisades here in the Los Angeles area. If you don't know Pacific Palisades, it is in, it's by the mountains. I'm right below Temescal Canyon where I can walk out the front door and go on a hike. Um, it's about a mile drive from a restaurant or a, a market, a supermarket called Air One um, that a lot of people in the Los Angeles area who are about healthy eating, organic eating, tend to congregate there. It is an expensive grocery store. I didn't say it was cheap, uh, but we do like to go and hang out there. And funny enough, uh, years ago, I and years ago, Two years ago, we had launched um, Shop and Shag at Air One Venice Monday nights. Every Monday from 10 to 11 p.m., singles shop at Air One. And the code word is soup. So as you're walking around, if you see anybody that you find attractive or interesting, you can ask them about the soup and use that to start a conversation because there are attractive people who are, and when I say attractive, I mean people who are doing a lot of self-work um, into spirituality. They tend to glow and they're all running and roaming around air one. And it's, uh, you know, it's harder now that we have the mask on our face, but we don't, it's just a great place to smile. And it's kind of like a social club. So I look at when I do go into air one and I'm spending a little bit more money on my food that I'm also getting access to a social club because I never know who I'm going to run into and meet. Uh, anyway, so at the portal and uh, it's close to air one, it's close to Temesco Canyon. And I am here with the founder of the portal. You get to um, join us in conversation. I'm going to let him say his last name uh, because it's, it's fun. He's from Denmark. This is Alexander. Brandrup. <laughs> say it one more time. It's Brandrup. Brand. Brand. Brandrup. 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 Yeah, Brandrup. You, ha you have to be, just be a little bit like guttural with your throat and just be a little bit angry and just like spit it out like Brandrup. Brandrup. Yeah. yeah you're get, it's get, get, getting closer. Getting closer. Uh, Alexander, you have dual citizenship. I do. You uh, became American citizen this uh, February. Oh. Proud to be American. Proud to be American. He might be prouder than some other people out there, but I, I think I'm, I'm pretty proud to be an American. I, I was actually thinking of all of the, this morning of, you know, all the times I, you know, I, I want to recreate our educational curriculums. Like I want, I want to see that recreated. I'll say to include relational skills and uh, sex ed. I think sex ed would be great to add communication, conflict resolution. You know, all the programs that we promote at a We Deepen. Would love to see them in primary educational um, systems, and so kids have access to them. Anyway, um, Denmark. Yes, Denmark. That's is, a country. I heard it's not Dutch. It's not Amsterdam. I just want to make that clear because every American that I meet, they always say, "Oh, you're from Denmark, so you're Dutch. You guys have the wooden shoes, and you, you guys smoke weed, and you have the windmills." What? No, that's Amsterdam. That's that's the Netherlands. It's not Denmark. Two different things. It's very important. You guys are the world's happiest people, I hear. We rank up there, and I like to say that we are the least unhappy. You're the least unhappy. Why? Why is Den? Well, well first off, <laughs> if Denmark is like where all the happy people are, why the United States? Why seek 
dual citizenship here? Well, so again, I I would say that the Danish people are the least unhappy because we are content with what we have. If you ask about, are you worried about getting an education? Are you worried about becoming sick and not being able to pay for it? Are you worried about job security? Are you worried about these things? Is that bringing anxiety to your level of being? And if you ask Danish people, they'd be like, no, I'm I'm good. Because the state pretty much takes care of a lot of these basic needs. And therefore, it's it's not the... It just has a higher threshold. It has a higher bottom average. Is that socialism? Yes. Interesting. Why does everyone in the United States, so many people hate the idea of socialism? It's... It's very interesting when you look at what socialism actually means, but it's generally speaking just because it's been uh, put in the same group as communism, which has been proven time and time again, doesn't really work in a grander scheme. So that's the reason. And America is very anti-communism. Don't let's stop the no that we don't want the red front. The iron curtain is here and that's it. And Socialism is different because it takes a different approach to democratic process and it really just means taking care of the people. Mm, we do. We. I'd love to see more talk about taking care of the people. I don't really care what you call it, if you call it socialism, if you call it um, libertarian, um, whatever it may be. I just would love to see more politicians speak up from an authentic place and relate to um, the American population as, hey, this sucks, things are hard, and um, and we're doing our best we can, and we love you. I love to even just hear the politicians say we love you, like that everything would be enacted um, through love. Well, what I do love um, is that we've now had this experience of I stayed at the portal um, three weeks before unleash um, we're now on the other side of the three-day transformational journey off the grid in sacramento and we've returned and i'm back at the portal um, visiting now this time and during that that those three weeks you know you and i had an introduction a brief introduction before and now we've really had you know we've time gone deep we've gone deep we've we deep. have deepened we have deepened <laughs> um and i am in admiration of your work and your vision um for what you're aiming to create at the portal um if you could maybe give um i love to hear you you did show me the manifesto mm -hmm. last night if you could just give a little description of what the portal is completely and the whole vision for the portal started when i decided to uproot my safe and secure and nice life in san diego where i've been living for four and a half years and i moved to colombia for for just two months but it was a profound experience and while i was there i spent a lot of time at co-working places And I saw all these places and didn't really feel there was that much connection really between the people that came to these places. So I thought, how can we have more spaces to foster authentic human connection? And that's where the vision of uh, the portal really started. And it has just evolved and been in a crazy journey since then. And I've always centered it around the word community which means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But that is the that is at the epicenter of the, the project, building community. Building community. You and I were talking about last night of um, cults, culture yes. and yes. cults. Um, and you had said something that like I had never, because there there's, I think it, we saw in the media it, within the past few years is there's just been documentary film after documentary film of the horrific things that happen inside mm -hmm. of cults and the fall of the guru. And wild, wild country. Wild, wild country. I mean, yeah. there's so many of them. Um, Bik Bikram Yoga. Mm -hmm. um, what, you, you, what, what does culture stands for, you said? Well, uh, you know, cults is just a short word for culture. It's a specific 
it's people that hold specific values and specific belief systems and that's where the word stems from but we've just directed it towards we've we have negative connotations with it nowadays did you say that the c u t c u l t stands for as an acronym for oh yeah the also oh, yeah so what we're building here is the cult we're reclaiming the word the cult and the cult is the creative umbrella of lovers and thinkers creative umbrella of lovers and thinkers i yes yes give me more because we all are craving spaces to belong and to be a part of community it's it's interesting with like you know i i have started now to think as i've seen like this uprise in um community development uh even next week i'm a moderator of a panel called community Stewart- stewardship and individuals in influencers i, I use the word influencers but i I, I do use that with like Priya Parker or Esther Perel. They have, you know, followings on um, social media and also um, Facebook groups. Like there's the Esther Perel uh, uh, discussion group on Facebook that is so active um, and it's run by someone other than Esther Perel, someone else started that's not even her. And so each of these individual thought leaders sort of have their own community followings. I wonder is... How many, you know, we already have like the Dunbar number, which we know that the human brain can only handle between 144. 144. I've heard 100 to 200 people. So on average, 150. Um, somebody it's else. 12 mentioned. groups of 12. So 144. 12 groups of 12. How did you, how did you, where'd you get that? that that's the Dunbar number. That's where it stems from. It's the, the best way that we as humans can organize. And it's also the, it's, Funnily enough, also the way that the military is organized, uh, 12 groups of 12 form different groups, and that's how information, and that's how they're able to organize bigger groups. So that's interesting, because I haven't heard of the Dunbar number in that way. I heard the Dunbar number in, like, circles. Mm -hmm. So me as a person, I have a circle of five people um, around me who are my core group, Mm -hmm. and those five people are tend to be people that I'm interacting with on a daily weekly basis like my significant other uh, children colleagues business partners and then there's an external ring outside of that which includes another 15 people and those 15 people are you know best friends um, more colleagues maybe more family Mm. um, neighbors and they that includes an that's another 15 people. And then there's another circle around that of 35 people. Um, those are people that I see on, a, you know, an every like within every six month basis. The, the, the 15 people before that are people that I'm seeing on a monthly basis. And then um, within and then outside of that 35 is another, um, you know, the rest of the people. Yeah, I mean, you always have different circles of people that you spend more time with and you connect more that is ever evolving and ever changing. But the way that I've heard about the Dunbar number is studies with other primates and looking at how how they are how they are operating inside their group and how they're able to organize and what they've found in these in these things and what I've read is that once they reach around the hundred and fifty number something happens in the group where they no longer can keep track of the social contracts that they have within that group. And so it either splits up or some kind of dispute uh, happens. So it just goes back to saying, like, what is the maximum number that we're able to collaborate effectively with? So going more back to tribal society and and these type of things as well, that um, maybe we are meant to be organized in smaller groups it's really interesting of now, you know, thinking about um, the number of communities that are being created. So even with this past Unleash, you know, we have the Unleash WhatsApp group is now popping off because we just came out of it. And there's so many stories of transformation and connection and people wanting to stay connected. And um, in my WhatsApp, you know, uh, app, I have the We Deepen chat um, that is active. And then there's the magic collective chat and then there's the wild women los angeles chat group 
And there's a lot of WhatsApp groups these days. That's for sure. <laughs> there's a lot of WhatsApp groups. There's a lot of Facebook groups, and 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 community development is now on the rise because we people do crave a, a belonging. But I wonder, I wonder what is going to be like, you know, how we navigate throughout our lives and this mental expansion, like our as we, you know, continue to unite because we're finding ways to unite and um, and I I like. You know, I, I think the purpose of our life is growth. I'm here to grow and to grow together. And we think of this idea of oneness that like once we can all get along and get back to oneness, then we've completed, you know, have human beings then complete it this lifetime. So in that, how, you know, the, the idea of this community development, like how many, how many communities can one be a part of um, is like a question mark I'd love to you, know, you can to... only be part of the cult. <laughs> <laughs> only one. <laughs> That's actually what the cult say. That, that, somebody said that. Some, I don't know. No, somebody said that. Not me. <laughs> I mean, that might be smart to pick. So, so you get to, in, in, I guess the exploration is like explore many communities and then choose yeah. one. You know, what I, what I also do is, you know, I will, um, for the vision of We Deepen is, you know, what we've seen is that, because I didn't. I didn't set out to build community and that has been the outcome. And it's interesting because it's been community that has been formed that has not been confined to one particular leader, one particular modality or one particular location. Yeah. It means like the word in itself means so many different things for so many different people. You know, it's, it kind of goes back to again, using the word, cult as culture and community is like how how wide do you want to do it it's really just a a set of um values that you all agree on so you could say that america is a cult you know if if you get up in the morning go to school and you have to hold your hand over your heart and and look up at a at a flag and uh, and chant some kind of uh song then that that seems pretty cultish to me and that's that's <laughs> pretty american so I would say it's the it's the culture that we collectively decide that defines how we want to act in the group. Yeah. So then, well, then how many groups can you put? I really like the word society. Yeah. Um, I think that's an, an underused word, and I I almost think deepen as a little bit of a society mm -hmm. because inside of it, you know, each of these experiences that we promote, mind travel, unleash the wave, silent disco. Um, with the work of the Tantra Institute and Hum Hum and many, many more is that their own, they're their own communities. And so we're networking the communities together, which gives people who are journeying through them the opportunity to, um, to experience more communities before, you know, because at different phases in your life, you need something different. I become a mom. I want to join the mommy communities. I, um, you know, move into a neighborhood, I want to join the swim club in that neighborhood. So, um, and then I move out and I'm no longer really at that swim club because I've just moved away from it. Uh, maybe I'll come back to visit. So then you can return to visit through, you know, events and experiences that are happening there. Uh, but we deepen essentially is being designed as a network of communities you know because and i say network of communities because essentially each of these experiences are their own um, communities as well and when you are throughout life if life is the purpose of growth you're always immersing yourself into experience that can catalyze growth and you're going to need different things at different points in your life i completely agree and i think it's important to be really be aware of these values that you decide to to live by and what's important so you mentioned growth so i made this whole framework for the portal and how we are doing and how we come together and what our purpose is and all these different things that you can that you can read and join in on if you want to like not forcing anyone to to come here uh, as a matter as a matter of fact there's a there's a strict application process to to become part of uh, the portal And so our three main values is passion, which is connected to love and growth, personal, individual, community. And then finally, being in service. What are you in service for? How are you giving back? 
I think everyone has an innate feeling that once they leave this planet, they want to have given more than they have taken. They want to have been a positive contribution to the planet in some kind of way. So I think it's important to think about how we are being in service. You, you said um, passion and the last one is service. What was the middle one? Passion, growth, and service. Passion, growth, and service. You said that um, love was yeah. attached to pas- passion. Yeah. Isn't love attached to growth and isn't love attached to love a is service a, too? We, love is everything. We, like, when, they, when the event is here, we can love is everywhere. It's, we all connected by love. It's love. <laughs> yes, that's, that's also true. Yes and, yes and yes and okay cool yes and um, I, I I love this because uh, uh, you know your friend um, uh, Amari yeah. was on is episode seven and that episode we had a conversation around values and virtues um, and so to hear and share the portals values being passion growth and service um, throws that into into the mix it's it's like these are these are all things that you can subscribe to um how, what was your process for you know distilling because there's also the word truth you know why is why is not truth one of the values it's to me it's just been really getting into great practices with mind body and spirit um just getting really clear on for myself where am i going and where where do i want to move towards and a process that has really helped me has been the ikigai chart have you heard about that i have heard of it so it's essentially looking at your life and trying to distill down where your passion meets your mission meets your profession meets your vocation so that means passion what you love to do mission what the world needs profession what you're good at and vocation what you can get paid for and so I thought a lot about that, meditated a lot with it, and it's been a continuous involvement of getting these different words and knowing myself more of getting closer to what actually feels aligned to me. What do I want to create? What does the world need? What what do I love to do? What am I good at? What can I get paid for? What, how can I stay in this in this type of uh, in this type of work that I want to do? And so I've kind of aligned the the whole project towards that as well towards being in that uh, space always and then comes the to talk about well how's that translated into the wider community of uh, the portal and that comes through passion love and fun i think fun is really important play is extremely important and again it comes back to looking at the workplace the co-working spaces in colombia seeing the modality and wanting to create something different, so co-playing spaces, um, growth, how are we growing personally together with the community, uh, overall just feeling, feeling that we are progressing as a society, and finally, service, um, what does the world need? I love you. <laughs> um, I love you too, Christina. Because uh, you know we're having this conversation, I get to be here face to face, and whoever is listening to this conversation, um, you don't get to be in the room with us. And um, and many of you may not even have met Alexander in person. I know that this is also community. So some of you have. Um, I want to take a moment just to also um, let you know what I see in this man in front of me, um, because. He is, first off, he's talking about these charts. Um, it, he is like an expert at chart making. I've gotten to see him as he's building the portal deck over the past couple of weeks and the designs and drawing it. And I mean, he's showed me numerous, numerous charts at this point. I also, you know, love about this man is that he is so um, passionate about female leadership and supporting and and supporting female leadership and um, and putting us in positions of guidance. I would use that word guidance as opposed to power because power does come with guidance um, and leadership. Another good word to say. Um, and and then third, when he said fun, fun, <laughs> fun, follow fun, 
That's my tagline. Follow fun, make history. Boom. So uh, fun is, you know, uh, being and and co-working with Alexander for the past couple few weeks is that he does play. It's like it's it's kind of blows my mind how much like fun and joy and like pep in his step he has at like all um, at all times. Pretty much. I've never seen you in a bad mood. Um, and to further describe now the archetype archetype of this human is 28, um, super handsome, like charming, radiating, glowing. Uh, I think maybe it's this. Were you born in Denmark? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I moved over here when I was 22. Okay, moved over here at 22. So Denmark are breeding like some of the best humans. Um, and in this household, the, the portal, because I will call it a household too, it's a community space, and there are um, four of them that live here permanently. There's a yurt in the backyard as well for guests to come and stay. And I gained access to the portal through... Yadi Iksa, who has now been on Deepin with Christina twice. Um, she resides here, as well as Skylife, who is a, a YouTuber who is telling the stories of um, of the experiences like Unleash or, you know, doing Wim Hof breathwork or, you know, what it's like to spend time with a wizard. Um, fascinating uh, storyteller um, on Instagram and on YouTube. And um, and then and then you have Huda here, uh, so yeah. I just wanted. I just thought it was really important that um, everybody who is listening to this podcast knows um, the person who is in front of me. You're also n- um, not in a committed romantic relationship at this moment. Um, and I mean, we're always in relationship, right? Coming from Christina. <laughs> You're always, yeah, we're always in relationship. But I think there's something that you have kind of declared that this is a period of your t- of your life yeah. right now. It's not that you're closed off to love, but that you're, um, and I, I think this is important, you know, distinction because, you know, Alexander and I have 12 years between us. And I remember of, you know, dating in my 20s and talk to women and they're kind of like, I don't know, these men and they're, you know, 20. So I, I just appreciate that you've taken the time um, to focus on yourself and to also, you know, you you do have romantic connections and relationships and you do flirt and you do have many women in your life and you do have experiences with them too. And you're very authentic in your communication um, from what I understand. Yes, definitely. I'm I'm exploring, and I have been exploring some beautiful connections that really help heal a lot for me and help you know inspire me a lot and and view the world uh, differently. So it's been amazing to to experience and foster a deep uh, friendship and connection with this amazing woman. And at the same time, I also know where I'm at right now in my life and the growth that I'm doing and the focus on my growth is really on myself right now. And I may not have the amount of attention to give so much into uh, fostering this deeper connection and going all in. So a part of me really wants to just go completely all in. Let's go. And at the same time, I know in one or two or three years or however long, I'll start to recognize these things that I still need to unlearn from my past relationships and from healing and from all these different (laughs) ways of connecting and relating to somebody that you feel really close with. And it all comes down to communication. How good are you at communicating your needs and boundaries? And how authentically can you express them? So when it comes up, oh, this conversation, ah, I don't want to have this conversation right now. It's like, no, that's the conversation you need to have because that's, that's where you'll grow. That's where you'll express what you really need and where your boundaries are in that relationship. Uh, how, 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 actually, let me, let me just think, let me collaborate or, or, um, with myself, <laughs> <laughs> collaborate with, your brain. <laughs> with, with my brain for a moment. Um, it's interesting. So we, we, can't, we, we you and I have a, a professional relationship and we also have mm-hmm. a personal relationship. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this p- 
podcast um, and this conversation, you know, it, we're weaving in and out of work and kind of like what's generally kept as a private life. You know, so often I've seen successful people, you know, CEOs at conferences share how they've 10 X their business. Uh, but you don't really oftentimes get to ask them about their love life. Yes. Try to ask Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates about their divorce. I have them on the podcast next. Yeah. Yeah. And the next up. <laughs> um, Did that make you uncomfortable to talk about? No. No? No. Not at all. Again, we always in relationship with everyone around us, with, with everything. Like, we view things and we've seen, like, it's, it's kind of, if you want to be, like, really meta with it, you can look at just objects and things. The way that we look at them depends a lot on what we've learned through our life and the experiences that we've had. And the same goes for relationship with, with other people as well. It's like, it's just our our view of it and no it doesn't make me uncomfortable talking about relationship did you choose to also make female leadership as uh, something to focus on and to advocate for because that gives you access to many amazing women yeah I actually thought about it when I, when I was first starting to really like getting these thoughts around, like, this is really what I want to send around and focus on. Like somebody's going to ask this question <laughs> at some point. Um, and I think it stems more from the, the good Danish values that I've grown up with, that men and women are equal, that we should strive to live in an egalitarian society. And that is pretty much how I've experienced my entire life and coming over here to america and becoming a citizen of america i do see even for a developed country like america that there's such a big difference between the power dynamics of men and women still and if it's like this here in what we perceive as a developed country how is it then really in underdeveloped countries where female genital mutilation is still a thing and where are these existing norms and patriarchal beliefs stemming mostly from religion uh, is still very much prevalent and is keeping um, women from actually exploring and being an equal member of society. So I think we have a fuck ton of issues <laughs> in the world. And one thing that I think could really make the world uh, a better place is if we started to collaborate more and <laughs> view men and women as equal it's very it's very simple you know it's a, it's a simple message we are equal so so we're we're equal and we're also different yeah uh, and and actually you know i'm yosef and i are going to have a conversation about the uh biological differences between man and woman um in another podcast episode so i won't go too much into that but there are you know i i think We are equal, and we're also complementary to mm -hmm. one another. Completely. We have strengths and weaknesses, both of us, both of the sexes. Like, no matter if anybody, you know, and I, I did, I ranted about this in 2018. I, um, Feminine Weapon Day, January 30th, every year. Um, sidebar, we, you know, I'll just give a little promotion, but we've raised over 67,000 now for children of abuse, extreme poverty, and human trafficking through this one day. And each year has a theme. And in the 2018 theme at five years was for the love of men. And during that, I had, um, well, I'd, I'd ranted a theory. I'm going to give you my theory. Um, I went around and just tested it out. and It's still inside of me, although people do push back on it sometimes. My theory is that um, man's life purpose is to make woman happy. And women's life purpose is to wholeheartedly love men. I mean, that sounds great. You know, it's like, it seems like a good, like, symbiotic relationship there. Yeah, make women happy. And in that making of women happy, um, every, I mean, I think it, 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 all your dreams 
come true. And I see it on play, even just of like, you know, holding a door for a woman or, um, uh, just when, you know, that, that's what you can say in relationship, like a man won't enter a committed romantic relationship with a woman. He doesn't think he can make happy. It's not that a man's responsible for her happiness. That's not what I'm saying, but there's a desire to make her happy and, and to feel love, wholehearted love from the feminine. And I have, you know, my, one of my uncle, I've, I, my dad is one of nine and out of the um, nine, six of them are, are men and out of the six men, two are gay. And one of my uncles has challenged me on this and he said, well, my life's purpose is not to make women happy. And I said, well, Uncle David, um, I watch the way that you treat your mother. <laughs> like you are so attentive to her and you're always nurtured, like taking care of her. And so I challenge you on that. Um, so just a, a little bit of reframe. This isn't about, um, any type of like uh, sexism thoughts. It's just, and it's a theory. I'm just throwing it out there. We, we need theories and we need to be able to, <laughs> to talk about these things. If you can't even suggest your theory, then like, how can we have a conversation about it? I mean, even men's bodies are designed to make women happy. What? <laughs> man's body <laughs> yeah. is designed to make a woman happy. Okay. It, it, it la- Elaborate. <laughs> um, the penis goes in the vagina, and it stimulates. Is this is this, what you, is this where we're going? This is a, this is a sex ed now, <laughs> one on one. <laughs> so when a man meets a woman, uh, the, the birds and the bees and the flowers and whatever. <laughs> so so back to um, you know of of putting you know I think if all men um, had this took on this initiative mm-hmm. to empower the female to rise right. into positions of leadership and guidance uh, that they would receive great joy from that experience if women met men in a way uh, with love and nurture and compassion. And that's what has been, you know, the, I think that's what men have been trying to get you know that's what men are trying to get from when they do it it comes out in all strange weird ways and it gets misconstrued and um and and i don't think men are trying to do that i don't think men like all men are trying to do that i think all men are trying to do what they're not trying to to give or to create a a situation where oh they want to they want to give something to to the woman i think these systems and these belief systems that we have created our society around very much benefits men it's like a there is a, a power dynamic there there's a it's power dynamics yeah so so why so why would why would men gener like i'm not saying that this is all men like again we need to be able to speak general general to have any type of uh conversation about these type of things but generally speaking why why do we still have so many places in the world where this where there is this power dynamic where where women are are forced and are stripped of rights forced to uh do a lot of unpaid work and do a lot of uh <laughs> a lot of things that don't that don't really get valued in the same way that we have decided to set our society up and around and I, again, I I really think it comes back to a lot of the um, the religious beliefs and how these texts and so on were construed, and like how God is the is the old white man with a long beard sitting up in the sky and looking down, looking down on on you and condemning all this stuff. I, yeah, I just think it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> I think some of it also have we have to reframe the idea of winning, like what is winning, um, because you know moving to create more situations that are win win. Um, there's no winner loser. Um, I even like to look at we deepens competitors are like oh there are our neighbors, um, but our society you know going into investor meetings it's like don't call them neighbors just say it as it is they're your competitors you got to be beat them and be better than them. Um, and there's room for all of us. And so in these 
in our relationships, oftentimes that um, comes into play naturally, like I win, you lose, um, and the space of duali- duality, mm. uh, when things are much more paradoxical than we admit, it's, it's, um, we, we have to deepen so much further into these conversations and yes, be able to, um, share our theories and the thoughts that are arising in our brain. Um, if they are relevant, sometimes it's best not to say anything yeah. sometimes, you know? Yeah. And we can have an open mind and we can listen to everyone, but there's a quote that stuck with me for a long time. And that is, we can't be tolerant towards the intolerant can't be tolerant towards the intolerant. Mm. Why do you think that is? Can't be tolerant towards the intolerant. Um, say more. So we can come with an approach of being loving, open and kind and listening and really feeling into what the other part is saying. But if the other part is choosing to be in intolerance, then our tolerance is going to be dominated by an intolerance. That's boundaries. Yeah. That's creating boundaries. And, and two and all of it is, you know, I've, I've part of my theme for, um, unleash like my own intention and what I've been, um, like my brain has internally been, um, trying to understand the difference between love and trust mm-hmm. like our love and trust the same thing um and you know i say my my defi- definition of love i'm realizing it's kind of I, I think love and trust might be the same thing um, because in love you still you create boundaries um and you're in trust you know you're trusting your own like i've, I've come to terms that i'm trusting my own intuition And I trust that God will send me the people to trust. Um, I might have just went off on a separate tangent. I like the tangent. Keep going. Keep going on the on the trust tangent. No, I agree. It's it's an important value for sure. And even even spiritually, you know, trusting that whatever you are learning, whatever obstacles that comes, whatever things you have to go through, is part of the the process. Just trusting that that's the right path for you yesterday uh we watched uh rahul uh a friend of mine rahul sanadad he's a advisor at we deepen and also a a dear friend and he was ceo and founder of test loop and years ago in a previous company that he created he um, at a conference um, a pitch conference uh sang on a ukulele uh and uh, pitched his business. It was it was it was so creative and fascinating, and it it inspired us to uh, think like, how are we going to go out and raise funding? Because the portal to create the vision that you see does need access to resources, um, and we deepen. We are going to go through a fundraising stage as well. And as um, we keep dancing and how does the portal and we deepen best collaborate um, out came of uh, if we created a, a festival for investors, potential investors who were, had the ability, you know, because you have to create a minimum when you're going to go raise funding. So our minimum being at 25000 um, to come in for investor and, and we'll curate and create the greatest transformational experiences um, of a weekend, a festival um, for, I'll call them high net worth individuals because they have to be high net worth individuals to be able to invest. Um, and we were brainstorming this this experience, calling it We Deepen the Portal, um, potentially doing it back at the Heartland Collective in Sacramento, where we just came back from Unleash. And the subtitle of that experience, so it's We Deepen the Portal, Doing God's Work. Doing God's Work, baby. <laughs> doing God's Work. Um, are, you still, are you still into it? Yeah, fuck yeah. Let's do it. Doing God's Work. It's like, if you read that tagline, you're going to be, what the fuck? 
I need to see what that is. <laughs> <laughs> um, excuse me, I just coughed. Um, yes, and this experience, you know, will have the greatest facilitators, um, master experience designers, um, tantra workshops, activation, uh, dance, you know, Yadik, so we'll definitely be there with Unleash. We'll get Jessica of the Magic of Human Connection. We'll go into respectful confrontation and mind travel. We're going to curate the most um, powerful experience. So they get to, our guests get to connect with each other and then use it as a pitch opportunity. And we'll do our investor pitches that weekend to this exclusive bunch of humans that get special invitations to be a part of this retreat, thinking that it'll happen in March, April, or May of 2022. It sounds very fun. And you know, we got to remember, follow fun. <laughs> follow fun. Follow fun. Um, so if, you, if anyone's listening and you know somebody who should be a part of that experience who can come in as an investor for a minimum of 25,000. And we will, um, we're going to do some pre-work, I think, to, will we raise a, a little bit of seed funding to um, invite all of these guests on our behalf? They'll, they'll it's classified it. information right now. There's, there's lots of details to be sorted out and we can't share everything at this moment here. So... Uh, bear with us. This is why team is so important. Um, and, you know, if you know the four agreements, uh, the fifth agreement is discernment. Just to recap the four agreements, uh, be impeccable with your word. Uh, don't make assumptions. Always do your best. And what's the other one? I don't know. I haven't read it. You've never read the four agreements? No. I don't read books. Uh <laughs> The four agreements. Be impeccable with your word. Don't make assumptions. Always do your best. And we have to Google this. I can't leave this um, podcast. But the, the fifth agreement was in this whole separate book is discernment. And Alexander just practiced discernment with me. And sometimes we need to dance in that discernment, which is... Um, I don't like to use the word skeptical necessarily, but you just have to um, tune into where information is being shared. Oh, don't think, don't take anything personally. That's oh. part of the four agreements. Don't take anything personally. Yeah, I like that. Yes. Don't make assumptions. Don't make assumptions. Assumptions, they, they're funny. That it's That's really a thing that I learned over the last years, like how many assumptions we make about anything at all times and it's it's just the way that our brain works but being a being aware of it when we meet people when we see it, it helps tremendously especially in conversation especially when expressing needs and boundaries it's so important not to make any assumptions about oh the other person is probably feeling this so i'm not gonna say this like no that's the conversation yeah. um i also just wanted to show some gratitude and appreciation for you Christina over the last three weeks having gotten to know you you are fucking incredible like I love you you are amazing the way that you approach people the love and kindness and care that you exude from you and at the same time being fucking badass with what you're creating bringing so many people together and creating so much healing that's amazing i i don't i am i'm lost for words of how amazing you are but it's really it's been a it's been amazing to experience so far and i, I can't wait to continue to uh, collaborate and uh, create with you oh, thank you thank you so much um i it feels so good to be seen by you on oh, the last day of unleash i you know uh, left with two friends or one completely new friend um and, you know, we took this private plane back and I, um, I felt a lot of anxiety that day. And there was this, a lot of anxiety around, um, I think of when I go places and I don't know somebody just yet, like you've gotten it, I, I feel most comfortable when I'm, I guess, seen and known. And I just, I remember in that experience on Sunday of 
also when looking back on like, like the anxiety that I was feeling in my chest, um, I get this separation anxiety from my work too. Like if I'm not necessarily around people that I can talk with about my work when it's like really present mind and after it being away from it. Um, so it's, I'm even more grateful to be in spaces with you because it's the, our connection has a purpose. Like I feel awkward at times I going out and making new friends. Like I just, I don't, I don't care at this point in my life to have people to hang out with, but when my connections have meaning and purpose, um, that's where is my highest excitement. So when there's like new things, you're like, ah, oh, these people don't know what I'm doing just yet. And, um, and I, you know, trying to find a way to relate, but I don't really just hang out, but I, I get to fly a plane. So this is great. Um, so thank you. Yeah. Can I ask you one question? Yeah. So it seems that you have centered your life around relationship and specifically love and solidarity. Uh, my question to you is, why do you think that you've had a hard time finding love? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> uh, thanks for the question. And I, my podcast, like, I asked the question. So. I haven't, I don't feel like I have had a hard time finding love. Okay. It's, you know, if I, that episode that I did of X rate it, um, with Andy Cohen and they titled the episode, um, relationship guru can't find love. Mm -hmm. And really I look at it as the opposite. It's nearly like, uh, love guru can't find relationship. So, I I feel so much love mm -hmm. in my life. Mm -hmm. I am surrounded by community and I don't feel lonely. I mean, I go through different of moments of feeling that and there is a longing inside of me to um, be in that relationship. And I, the type of relationship that I'm seeking isn't something that I've ever seen before. Okay, and what is it for all the interested listeners out there? <laughs> what is the type of relationship you're searching for? Um, I would I would love to be mother. Mother. Um, I would like to be in a relationship that uh, greatly like helps us impact the world um, much more in our togetherness than separate. And what I've found, my experience in recent relationships and why it, it they end it, um, because it's not like I, I'm not trying, I'm, I'm practicing connection, um, I'm showing up sometimes, um, but I, I do show up and, you know, as you can see, if anyone's watched about my love life on TV, Um, but I, I've found that at times I'll get to a space where I just feel drained. I feel mm. like I, I need, I need something that's going to a relationship that's going to feed me and support me. And so that has to be somebody who is grounded in who they are. Um, somebody who has something that they're working on, that they're passionate about and focused attention um and i also you know i continue to make aim to make space for it i mean i'm also i'm about to go be in an rv with my father for a month uh, growth and and you know i am i am exploring something with somebody and i'm open to whatever comes so it's a lot of it's trusting god it's you know they, they edited out of the episode that i did but i did say when andy cohen asked me pretty much the same question mm -hmm. and i said um i don't know you should ask god mm -hmm. uh i feel guided by the divine and um and again this doesn't mean that i don't have a longing and i don't get you know um I don't know, sad's, sad's not the right word, but like, I don't get like, oh, where is he? <laughs> you know, at times. Um, but I also know that uh, 
I just have I, faith. So I have to have faith. And, um, and that too, as I continue to do my life's work, um, they say what shines so bright that he can see you. It's that the, um, the people that are in my orbit, uh, you never know at any time of these relationships that we form, we kind of go in and, you know, we want to know like, what's the connection with it, but anything could develop with somebody around me at, at any time. Um, so I guess the final answer is ask God. Okay. And I'll ask God, I'll call him after this podcast here. And could it also be that the, there are certain expectations around what a relationship might look like. And so by creating these expectations that you can maybe never really get to a, or, or get to a, maybe you are steadfast that you only want to if you can get to these expectations around what it means to be in a relationship that it just becomes really difficult to find it give me an, i can't think of an give me an expectation that you think i may have um you are expecting so you want to be a mother so i let me just stop you i do i would love to be a mother mm -hmm. and um, the relationship is more important to me. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have no, you know, while I appreciate and, you know, I, we have an episode on with Gina, um, uh, single mother by choice mm -hmm. is the title of that episode from your love accomplice in the same stream. Um, and she became a mother on her own. Mm -hmm. Um, and I have many friends and people out there who have frozen their eggs like i haven't done any of that i have no, no desire to do any of that for me um i um i believe i'm healthy i can have a child and i can adopt a child and i might be in relationship with somebody who has children already that come into my life um and i just have faith that that will happen for me it won't so that's not necessarily a full it's a it's a it's a desire mm -hmm. Um, but I wouldn't say it's an expectation. Right. But you you are looking for a man that is fully in his purpose, that is changing the world for the better, that's also able to be caretaking and take care of you and uh, <laughs> and create the structure and should also be handsome and he should be good to animals and he should like the, it seems like I'm just, I'm just saying some some things now and you can say if they're not true or if they're true. It seems like there are a lot of attributes. That would be nice to have, but you don't, you don't, you're not expecting any of these attributes and you're not, you're not settling for anything where you're like, oh, this is like, you're never going to find somebody who's perfect for you. I'm not? No. I, How do you know? Because I think it's a unrealistic standard to go for some, go for perfectionism. Well, I think that everything is perfect in every single moment. Yeah, I mean, you can you can take it that route and say like everything is just the way they're supposed to be. We're and here for growth. Yeah. So yeah, and I, again, I've, I've tried multiple relationships. Yeah. It's I'm, I'm putting myself out there. So get, okay, look, when you're looking for a man, you're looking at maybe let's say just say thirty different buckets or attributes in this man. And you would like the average to be very high, but you're not going to find somebody who's 10 in all of them. So I don't even have a list. I just know the way that I want to feel. Okay. And then I have somebody in what the, the uh, We Deep in Community, shout out to Scott, who is um, is like Christina, like a group of guys of us. We all got together and we're trying to figure out what it, what, like, what is it? Like who... Who do you like? <laughs> like <laughs> let's figure this out, Christina. Okay, <laughs> let's get to work. <laughs> he was like, "Would well, you have a list? Write a list down." And so then I'm like writing a list because God's coaching me to write a list. Mm -hmm. And um, but I don't like how you just said. Here's all the things that he has to have. I don't really have that list. It's like how uh, how can you find him then? <laughs> then, then we're gonna get back to that. <laughs> I, how I can write because I'm out in the world. You're just trusting. You're just I'm trusting. trusting. Yeah, yeah. I have a social job. <laughs> um, I meet new people all the time. I have deep experiences. Um, yeah. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong Christina, with being you, uh, picky. This is no, the most important area of yeah. your life. 
Yeah, but there's nothing wrong with being picky. You do sound like a little bit like my mom. Do I? I sound like your mom. <laughs> wow. No, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> my mom is wonderful. Okay, okay, okay. Like, come on, she always tells me you're too picky. You're too picky. How did we get on this conversation? Oh, but uh, I think it's very interesting, and I think, I mean, you are you are so adorable, and you're doing so many great things, and you have so many things going for you, and I'm sure that. There are plenty of beautiful gentlemen out there that would be so grateful and so lucky to just be in your presence. I'm like blushing. I think I smell my pits. <laughs> um, what did I want to wrap? Our, 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 oh, do you know what I want to wrap this with? Because yeah. I think this is your Amazon story oh. is is fascinating, and I think then it to give people a little bit even a deeper dive into your professional experience mm -hmm. as well uh, because it's so relevant for anybody who um, is interested in investing in our collective uh, can, like so you had a yeah high, successful lighting company so when i was in uh, high school my brother my father and i we got together and thought and looked into the market of led lighting and uh We were we were hustling with it. We were going from door to door, knocking and trying to sell light bulbs. That was kind of hard being a, a door to door light bulb salesman. And when we the fam the entire family immigrated over here, we were hustling and hustling and trying to make it work. And after a couple of years, we were just at the point of saying, "Okay, let's just liquidate the inventory. Let's let's just stop this business here." And we decided to liquidate it on Amazon. This was in 2014. And after a couple of months, we had sold all the inventory, and it was great. It's like, okay, let's let's continue doing this. We obviously got onto something here, and we just dove in, really focused, really hacked the the entire Amazon game. It was like, how do we become really good at their platform? How do we become really good at selling on Amazon? And we did just that. We grew from just us three uh, in 2015 to over 60 employees in uh, in 2017 and it was just ex explosive massive uh, exponential growth and right around that time in 2017 uh, we get an invitation from amazon they invite us up to the headquarter and they are asking all these they were with like that product manager and they like asking all these different questions saying like oh so what is this lighting and what is this how do you do it and what is the certifications and what's the process? And we kind of like, okay, something is, something is happening here. Mm. And then one, dun, 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 and then one year later, they launch a complete copy of our product line, spec from spec, listing setup, bullet points, pictures, products, all of it is just completely copied into Amazon basics. And, um, Yeah, so we had to adjust the business a lot. We had to lay off some things and do some structuring, but we were actually you able to lay off like 60 people, right? Well, that came later. Uh, we had to adjust the business initially um, because we were competing now with Amazon on their platform. Oh. Um, and we were able like, to find a good rhythm and, and continue to, to stay in business. And then in 2020, uh, in March 2020, I'm at uh, Envision, and when Envision I... Envision Festival. Envision well, Festival. That's a, a week-long festival in Costa Rica. Right. It's the last one that happened right before COVID hit. Right. And I had decided to to turn off my phone, and as I turned it on, uh, going back from the festival, having this amazing transformation uh, experience, all these emails and messages come in, we've just gotten shut down on Amazon. From one day to another, they just shut down our account no explanation no letter no nothing just oh you have a business here let's just boop shut it down so we did my my brother worked extremely hard to and did all these appeals to try to get our account reinstated we did like 12 appeals they wouldn't tell what's what the issue was and uh, and two months later we got We got reinstated on on Amazon, but at that point, we had lost all the traction and everything that we've been working on for these last six years. 
uh, and even longer, you know. And uh, we had to file for bankruptcy this year. We had to um, lay off all the 60 employees. We had to we had to sell the family house. We had to yeah move out of that, and uh, that was a really stressful, depressed, anxiety-ridden time. And it really it really hurt a lot being at the point of wow, having spent so much blood, sweat, and tears putting into that business, and the fact that can it just be be taken away uh, so quickly by somebody who has so much um, influence and power over how the e-commerce market is actually run. So, yeah, I have a I have a little bit of a vendetta against uh, Darth Bezos, as I call him. Dark. <laughs> Darth Bezos of the Empire, and um, and I think that it all you know I learned a lot. I learned a lot from the process. I got to grow and exponentially grow an e-commerce business. Did a lot of global supply chain and learned a lot of operations and teams and organizations setting that up. Like the the learnings were unbelievable. Like the best MBA you could ever uh, get. And onward. <laughs> and onward. I, wow, what a fucking crazy experience. And um, oftentimes I, I, I think about, you know, Amazon is this giant. And so is corporate America. And so for small businesses that have the power to be so impactful and especially of being, you know, we, this generation, like we're, we're a lot of the 20 something, 30 somethings are in this creation phase and we're all entrepreneurship has been, um, I don't want to say shoved down our throat. I don't know why that's coming through. It's more been like, has been presented to us as this ideal, ideal, this exciting, even, even I heard, you know, I don't know where this is now, but in 2014 on dating apps, if you were a founder, it was the most uh, matched profile. Everybody wanted to date like a founder. Yeah. Uh, entrepreneur. It's the American ideal. It's the, it's it's what the society is built. It's like, you can make it in America. And we really fucking did. We reached all the goals. We came over here, immigrant family. We reached for the stars. We got there. We We had a great business. We were... We're doing well. We got American citizenship. Um, all these things is possible. And it's really only possible, I would argue, in America because of the way the system is set up. However, I completely agree with that whole thing about, oh, everyone be an entrepreneur, start business, doing all these things. Like, no, it's not. Don't do that. It's not for everyone. It's yes. it's a and, fuck ton of work. And collaboration. I know you, you preach collaboration. And so that's what... You know, it, it's I, I hear it. They say if you move to a new city and there's something that you want to see in your city, rather than starting it yourself, go ahead and find who's already doing it and join their ship and support each other and and make, create win-win scenarios within that environment. But oftentimes, I think the the pitch for entrepreneurship is sort of like go do it yourself, mm. um, and then we each create individual brands and the. Um, the puzzle piece is now how do these individual brands work together, which I really appreciate of We Deepen the Portal having this conversation because as we began to think, you know, I, I look around in the community and I was like, you know, Adam Roa has the Create community and, um, and you know, and even in our guides that are working with We Deepen have their own separate communities and how do we, you know, Amazon, it's very easy. They have so much resources. They have so much cash. They just go buy up other businesses. They just go buy people. I don't have the ability, you know, you, you can't go out and acquire We Deepen right now or I can't go and acquire the, the, the portal. Um, so we then get to practice all of the relational skill sets that we have honed in to by attending these transformational programs like Envision, like Unleash, like the things Tony Robbins does and Joe Dispenza. And now we get to be in practice of that as we unite and build these businesses together as sovereign brands within them. 
And maybe there will become a time that we become one underneath of it all. And maybe that's even the name one. <laughs> uh, but for now, at this point, it's like, how do we um, build networks? Yeah. Yes. And we also got to remember what what they've built with these businesses has brought tremendous innovation and convenience to the way that we run our lives. And I think it's important that we just consider what is really necessary for us. To what degree does our convenience become more important than the ripple effects that it causes? I know it's so true because you still use Amazon, don't you? Yeah, I still use Amazon. There's, it's They own over 50% of the e-commerce market. Like, How can you not do it? But it's about being conscious about do you really need this within the next, if you order now, you'll get it uh, within the next 12 hours and so on. Like, do you really need it within the next 12 hours? Mm-hmm. Like, can, can you find the brand on Amazon and then buy it directly from the manufacturer? That's, that would be the best uh, option. Yeah, that's a good, good thing to think. And, and two is a lot of times we get in these states, we want it. Instant gratification is so trained in us that, mm-hmm. Um, even if it's okay to receive it next week, it's still this like, mm-hmm. you know, dopamine hit of like, I get it instantaneously. Yeah. And that's the thought. In, do you want instant gratification or do you want a long-term fulfillment? I'm game for long-term fulfillment. Now, Alexander, I know the portal dot earth is the website that eventually there's, there's nothing there just there's yet. Nothing there, yet. Nothing no. there just yet. No. Um, so, secret, secret society. So to um, stay afloat um, or be looped into what's happening at the portal, uh, I imagine you can for now go to your Instagram. Yeah, and you'll- Bushy Elf. Just search for Bushy Elf. <laughs> Bo- Bushy no. Elf. Alexander Prendrup. Bougie Elf? Is that what the, the, the tag either the name one, is? Either one. It's the fine. username is Bougie Elf. That's yeah. so fucking cute. <laughs> um, and uh, okay, so they can find you on Instagram. It'll be in the show notes as well. Mm-hmm. And then tune back in for another podcast of Deep In with Priscina because I will continue to share more of what's happening at the portal because this partnership is, is in. I mean, we're kind of dating, Alexander. Anyway, yeah, we are, we are kind of dating in, in, in some ways. It's uh, <laughs> with consent from both uh, sides. It's yeah. important. Yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, we deepen the portal. Uh, thanks so much for sharing your love and your zone of genius and your time um, with me and with those who are listening right now. Um, if you are in the Los Angeles area, again, tap into... Uh, tap into the the Instagram world and Alexander's bougie elf and see what's happening at the portal. We'll also share it through the We Deepen network. Alexander is part of the We Deepen WhatsApp group too. Um, so you can connect with him there and me as well. If you'd like to get access to be invited into that group, just send me a private message on my Instagram at Christina Weber. Um, also check out wedeepen.com for the updated schedule of events. We will continue to populate that as we're working inside to build portals and, um, and new tech for guides to be able to submit their activities so we can bring them to you and share them with you. And you have one central location to find all of the events that will change your fucking life for the better. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your friends. Consider who might like this podcast episode and send it off to them. Subscribe, follow if you're on Spotify, if you're on Apple, that's where you subscribe and leave a review because it'll help more people find this podcast and listen to, and then they can come deep in with both you and I. Thank you all. And until next time, I love you. Bye. (laughs) 